Dear friends, I'm so happy to be with you again for uh, the Feast of Easter of Resurrection and um, to read together this icon of the Resurrection, which is actually a modern interpretation of a classical Byzantine icon. Um, one of the most known models for this kind of icon is um, this one, a painting which is to be seen in the apse of a Byzantine church in Istanbul now. It is called um, the Church of the Savior in Kora or Karya Jami. Actually, the Byzantine tradition doesn't have an icon of the actual moment of the resurrection. There are two icons that correspond to this moment. And the first one is the one who is called Anastasis, um, which means rising up. Um, but actually is more known under the name of Descent of Christ into Hell. Um, and this is what this image represents, the descent into Hell of the Savior to bring the news, the good news of um, an eternal life and to bring up to the light all the souls of the people who passed away in the past, in the present, and in the future. The sign of this announcement is a scroll of parchment that Jesus held here in his left hand. Um, that means he is preaching the resurrection into in, in the underworld um, but actually christ is here the central point of the whole artistic composition not only spatially so not only he is um, in the middle of the field of the image all other all the other figures are articulated around jesus so he is the central point of the image because he is the central point of creation of our life, of the universe, if you if you like. Um, but actually, he is presented here in the moment when he burst out of hell. The hell represented here as a grotto, as a dark pit full. Uh, with um, coffins. These squares uh, are actually coffins, the, the image of um, ancient sarcophagi. And um, as he bursts out from hell, he breaks the gates of the hell and there is a hymn in Byzantine liturgy saying exactly, describing exactly this moment as Christ coming out of hell breaks actually the gates and you can see here the gates of hell, two panes of the gates of hell and also several nails and keys and other locks and other pieces of, of the broken doors of hell. And as he um, gets out, he pulls the first man with him. So the first man, Adam, who naturally was also the first man who died in the history of humanity, is brought up to the light by Jesus. And this light is suggested by the gold background of this 
icon and of any icon for that matter. The, the gold background represents the light that in tower, in, um, accompanies or enters um, God. Always when God is present, life is pres uh, light is present. Sorry, and the golden background suggests this light is an element of visual language suggesting its divine light of God. So Adam is brought out from darkness into the light by Jesus, who, as you see, holds his hand. But Adam actually cannot, cannot hold back um, the hand of Jesus. You see, Jesus keeps the hand by the wrist, not by the actual hand. The arm is kept by Jesus by the wrist. That means that Adam and um, humanity, um, mankind, is so impotent, um, so powerless in front of death, that it cannot save itself. Adam cannot save himself, cannot not even grasp the hand of Jesus to pull himself out from hell, but he has to be drawn out by Jesus, which holds his hand by the wrist because he is powerless, Adam is powerless. Of course, this hold by the wrist has also another significance. Um, the wrist is one of the points, as we all know, where you can measure the heartbeat. So it's the one of the points of the human body where the presence of life can be checked. And Jesus holding his wrist, Adam's wrist, is actually giving him this life, is resurrecting him, like in the medical procedure. Adam receives the life again anew by this grasp of Jesus. Another sign of his um, impotence, of his powerlessness, is his um, left back uh, foot, uh, actual leg, sorry, his, his uh, back leg, which is um, presented here in an unnatural position. It's too so the ang and the angle is too uh, too uh, small for a normal position. This is also an element of visual language by which Byzantine art suggests um, the the powerlessness of of um, of mankind in front of that. So Jesus brings the first human and with him all the mankind. Because as St. Augustine said, um, by the sin of Adam, by his um, unobedience, by his lack of obedience, obedience, sin entered into whole humankind, past, present and future. And by his salvation done by Jesus here, whole, the whole humankind is saved, actually. Um, the whole scene is assisted in the in the upper, um, at the upper level, by two angels carrying. The angels are presented as um, spiritual beings, and this is suggested in in this in the language of this icon, not only by the wings, but also by the fact that they are represented only half, uh, only the half of, of their bodies are represented. That is another element of, of visual language proper to the Byzantine art, suggesting their um, supernatural um, identity, supernatural as a supernatural format of, of existence. And these angels um, carry one of them, the one to, of, to, to, the, to the left, carries the cross. And the one to the right carries the instrument of Jesus' death. 
the reed with the sponge soaked in vinegar that was reached to him in, before his dying, and the spear which penetrated his side. So all the instruments of that are present here. Um, that is present here through them, and Jesus is um, killing that. This is another expression present in the Byzantine hymnography. Jesus killed the death, destroyed death. Um, in the middle of the icon, we have two a part of, of from from Adam, we have two um, groups of of persons. Um, the ones to the left are the prophets of the Old Testament, um, and the ones to the right are the saints and martyrs of the New Testament. Mm. In the lower part of the icon, in hell we see two human figures, which represent, this is an innovation. This is not uh, an element of the canonical icon of the resurrection. Uh, usually in that place, devil is represented chained, also as a sign of his defeat in front of the divine light of Jesus. But here we see two people actually, represented most certainly the souls coming out from hell after the resurrection of Jesus and after the resurrection of uh, Adam. So the whole humanity coming out of uh, coming out from from hell are is represented by two these two human figures which if we are looking attentively, we can see that they seem scared, uncertain, um, they cannot believe what uh, what is happening. Coming back to, to the two groups of persons, um, as I said, the group of uh, to, 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 the, to the left side uh, are the prophets of the Old Testament, the first two with bearing crowns, first two from the left bearing crowns are usually David and Solomon, the prophet kings. And the third one is John the Baptist, who was the last prophet of the Old Testament and the forerunner um, of Jesus, of the Son of God. To the right, the group of apostles and martyrs and generally saints of the first Christian centuries is lead is led by by the Virgin by the Virgin Mary um, and if you see as well um, John the Baptist as Mary they reached they reach their hands towards Jesus in a gesture of supplication of prayer and this a composition formed by these three figures jesus in the middle um, john the baptist on one side and the virgin on the other is can be an icon by itself this kind of image is called is called in the in the byzantine iconography daisies which means prayer. Uh, why that? Because John the Baptist and Mary can be our model of prayer to Jesus because they are the only two per human persons who recognized him before, who recognized the Son of God, the, the Word of God, before he was born as a man. Because as you know, the Virgin, of course, know, knew him from uh, the, the conception, from uh, the Annunciation. She knew that her son was the Son of God, was the, the Word of God. 
And John the Baptist, if you remember, during Mary's visit to Elizabeth, John the Baptist, who was not yet born himself, leaped in the womb of Elizabeth as he recognized Jesus. So this, so Mary and, and John the Baptist are the, the only human persons who recognized the word of God in Jesus, who recognized Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah, before Peter, before the others, because Peter, he recognized, recognized Jesus as well when he was asked, who do you say I am? And he said, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God. Um, but Mary and John the Baptist recognized Jesus even before that, even before his birth, even be before his, his uh, if you like, materialization into a human person. And that is why they represent the model of a, a perfect relation of humanity with Jesus, with God, and therefore a model of prayer for us all, for us all. So if we are looking at this icon from a distance and seeing all the elements that are included in it, we can, we can say that the whole creation is part of this moment of resurrection. The angels, so the, the, the um, supernatural creation, the prophets and the saints who represent the, the heavenly church, and the humans who represent the earthly church, and also the underworld, because God is present everywhere in heaven, on earth, and in the underworld, in the darkest darkness, Jesus is present. So also in the darkest darkness there is hope, because God is there, even in the moment of death, even there where there is no life. He is present and he brings life. And this is the mystery of his res re resurrection, that he brought life in the whole creation. So I hope uh, this, um, maybe not a very clear, maybe not very um, systematic presentation will help you to understand better um, not only this icon, but maybe also the mystery of the resurrection. I wish you all a blessed feast of the resurrection of our Lord and may his blessing be with you always. Thank you.